G'day guys, welcome back to my channel, I am Pierre, and this is Simple Home Brew. Firstly, I would like to welcome Dale Mudgeway to Patreon. Welcome mate, thank you for your support. It really is absolutely awesome that people are punching in a little bit of money to help this channel grow. Cheers. <music> Well, I had a message in my comments in one of my videos asking me, does my big shed here, my brew shed, have a lot of spiders in it? Well, it has a lot of cobwebs, and I do brush it out periodically. Every couple of weeks, I'll brush out all the cobwebs and get rid of any spiders that might be in there. We do have redbacks, so they're normally underneath things in Australia. So redbacks don't like being out in the open. They like being under things. And they wear gloves, so that's going to be a fine thing. The spiders... Mostly are okay. Um, redbacks are deadly, of course, but most of the other ones you just avoid them, and that's just what we do in Australia. We just avoid the deadly ones, and we know what they look like. Yeah, you just learn as you get older. Anyway, back to the video. Um, I have a finished fermented beer that I've just done. It was a Cooper's Draft with added hops of um, Amarillo, I believe, and uh, I'm going to transfer it into a keg. But this time, I'm going to transfer it using gravity and not trying to use minimum amount of gas. It was brought to my attention from a subscriber and he pretty much said, instead of using gas to push your fluid out of your fermenter into your keg, why don't you use gravity? And I said, well, I couldn't figure out how it would work, being that if you close both ends, how's the flow happen? Well, I tried it last time. I actually tried video on this once before and it came out pretty bad. So this time I'm gonna try and do a little bit better. It works, um, it's a bit slower. But it saves so much on gas. I mean, I, I won't use a, a quarter of a tank of gas just to punch it out. It's, I don't know if you use that much, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm here to show you how it's done and let you know that it actually does work. All right, let's do it. What I have here is my fermented fluid and my little keg sitting on the floor. Now I've cleaned these completely spotless. Um, I will be using sanitizer on the end so that it doesn't get into the beer. I don't want any bacteria getting in. And I have these two hoses. Now, I made these up myself. This is my gas line. Uh, I've got the two white plugs. They will show you, they, they are basically used for gas out, or gas in, sorry. And I have my beer line. This is my black plugs, which is beer lines. A little bit dirty, so I'll give it a quick clean. Um, feel a bit of damage, but it still works all right. So I'll give those a bit of a clean up. And... We'll start transferring, shall we? So the thing is, I've actually purged these. I've actually flushed these through with uh, sanitizer. Also cleaned them, sanitized, and de-gassed, uh, de-oxygenated them. So basically, I used a keg that was full of gas and pumped the gas through these lines so that these are full of just uh, CO2. Both lines of CO2 full. I haven't opened these since, so they actually got a little bit of pressure in the pipe. Uh, and now all I'm doing now is just quickly sanitizing the ends that are going on the There you go. Okay, now if you haven't seen this, this is sanitizer in a bottle. It's a chemical safe thing I got from Autobahn. Uh, that's our local car place in Trelgan. So I'm just quickly now just sanitizing all the terminals. I will sanitize these posts up here, which you can't see in the video. You might be able to see over there. Yeah, you can. Just sanitize these posts. So what you got to do is make sure that your pressure in your keg is lower than the pressure in your fermenter. Now I believe there's, well it's cold crashed. So I don't know what pressure's in there at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll quickly chuck the gas on this, put a little bit of pressure in if I have to, or release the pressure if I have to, and also on my keg. So I'll make sure that the keg has about one to two PSI less than this, doesn't have to be much. Half a PSI, it doesn't matter, as long as the pressure on the bottom is lower than the pressure up top. And that will start the flow. These, this is the beer line. I'm not going to put that on yet. I will get my gas. This is my gas bottle. So the reason why I'm just using the gas bottle is basically it's convenient. Now we've got a gas line. So the gas line's the yellow one on this side. I, ha I can tell because the outpipe is on the red at the moment. You can see it through the actual fermenter. I'll release the pressure on my gas bottle and just put it on and see what it comes out as. All right, so the pressure is not that high. Oh yeah, there we go. So we're at, well, I don't have to pressurize it. So looking at what I can tell, uh, if I can show you, up here, we're looking at right now about eight PSI. So I want to drop, uh, I'll leave it at eight PSI, providing that's seven PSI, uh, providing the 
keg is at 7 psi, we're right. I want to bring this keg down to 7 psi. just want to make sure. So I'll just purge it. Because I reckon I put about 20 or 30 psi in there. And I want to bring this to about 7 psi. And this is going in the in. This is going in the inside. We'll bring the gas up. And it's not going to be overly accurate, but I think that's around about right there. So that's just under eight. Remove the gas. This is the only time we need to put gas in. Everything else should just flow naturally. So what we've got is our keg. The keg has posts on it. They have um, uh, in and out. What happens on the out is your beer line. And there's a little pole that goes down to the bottom of your keg, which feeds the beer to your, you know, your taps or whatever you need. And that picks it up from the bottom of the actual keg, so it's really clean. Um, we're actually going to fill in the outline. I'm gonna put that on the outpost, from the outpost of the fermenter to the outpost of the keg. Now I'll do that first, because I want the flow to start. I'm hoping, I might just depressurize that just a little. Just a little. I'm not worried, I'm worried that it won't, it'll, fly, it'll, it'll flow back and I don't want that to happen. I won't hurt it because I've got sanitizer all through it and CO2 all through it. Now I'll push this on. We've got no flow. Now the reason why is they're equalized. They're both at the same pressure. So nothing moved, which is good. It doesn't matter. All right, the flow started. Um, I don't know what happened. I was, I think, what I found out is you can depressurize your keg and go below the fermenter pressure. You still need to start the flow of liquid before gas will start moving properly through here. Well, that's transferring. Something I did discover is um, basically when you do this kind of transfer, you need to get a flow going. Uh, no matter how much pressure you have in either line, they're gonna equalize as soon as you plug them in. So what you need to do is start the flow in the beer line, so the gravity and the weight of the fluid in the beer line pushes in to the keg. Once it starts, it'll fill up in the bottom. Uh, at the moment, it's about half full and it will push the gas up, out the gas line, start the flow into the fermenter, and then the process will keep happening. So it'll work constantly in a circle, providing you have weight of fluid running down the one side, otherwise it won't flow. So while that's flowing, while that's working, um, I will tell you that I made this beer last two weeks ago, and it smells awesome. Um, I'm, I'm hoping it will be beautiful, the hops, hit that I gave it is going to make it um, come out really nice. It's going to be a nice uh, clear beer, what I can tell. I'm looking forward to it. It's, uh, it's smelling awesome, I must say. I will leave you guys to watch it go as time lapse and we'll go from there. Before this finishes, I need to take a sample. I think I'm not going. I'm going to run out of um, beer in the fermenter before it finishes. I'll quickly take that off. Now, when I take it off, uh, shit, it will stop the flow, and of course, the flow won't empty out of the uh, line. And I'll quickly take a sample because, my friends, I want to. I'm using a quickie, by the way. If you guys haven't seen one. You probably can't see what I'm doing here. I'll pop it over there so you can see. Just getting a small sample. Because I want to taste it. I want to see what it's like. Alright, so we had a few problems at the end. The line got clogged up with hops. Uh, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. I got about three quarters of my keg filled. And I got myself a glass. So I, I was able to pour myself a, a bit. The smell is exceptional. It's really, really fresh. Nice hoppy smell. I'm getting, I don't know, caramel. Um, it smells good. I've got to let it age a little bit, a couple of weeks, before I do a proper tasting. But here we go. It's um, it's okay. It's not brilliant. It has uh, a caramelly flavour. Hoppy. Um, not 
clean tasting, bitter. It's not bad. You can taste the caramel malt that I put in or whatever it was. It was the um, the malt extract that I put in. Oh, it was the caramel malt, wasn't it? It was the caramel malt from the... Was it the caramel malt? Yeah, it was. It was the caramel malt from the Morgan's caramel malt. That's what I'm tasting. Now, I found that the one I did before this, I just aged for a couple of weeks. And it came out perfect. It, it really needs time to age. Uh, two weeks is pretty good. You give it a bit of a taste. So we'll do a tasting after this uh, in the next couple of weeks. See what it's like. It is drinkable though. I will now put the keg in the kegerator. Let it cool um, and let it sit for two weeks. I'll put, I'll give it, I'll give it three days of 30 PSI uh, CO2 to let it get uh, a bit of carbonation and we'll taste it. All right, guys, I hope this is educational. I hope you got something from it. Cheers. Give me a thumbs up if you liked what you see, and we'll see you on the next one. Okay, thanks, guys. myself a little glass it is carbonated a little bit from fermenting uh, it has been in the fridge for a little bit it smells absolutely what are you looking at hey over here it stopped hello oh um, I don't know what the rate is I'll I'll pop a little thing up here saying what the alcohol volume is stop moving you rest I think what are you doing at the moment on the back of your tongue. It's not bad. It's not a bad beer. What are you looking at? Keep looking away. What the hell? Stop looking away. <laughs> Good thing. Anyway, this one is a video on transferring my finished fermented beer. Where are you going, camera? You're not supposed to look around. You're supposed to be looking at me. Thank you. I'm using a Talison um, uh, face. Oh, it's, a, it's a automatic... Uh, line, it lines itself up by your face. As soon as I look away and look back, oh, no, if I put my hand on my face, it freaks out. Look, you can't find me. How, how cool is that? Now it's now me again because I've uncovered my face.